Take a look at the tail of the tape now. As Hopkins tries for that 20th consecutive title defense. And you'll see that Bernard turned 40 this uh, past month in January. Howard Eastman is 34. Height advantage of one inch for Hopkins. Arm length advantage, three inches measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. And they both weighed in a half pound under the 160 pound limit. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Bernard Hopkins Howard Eastman fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight in case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards after four rounds have been completed, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim! When Howard Eastman last appeared in this country, he was wearing a blonde mustache and blonde beard. Made him look about a thousand years old. You won't be seeing that tonight. You will eventually see his face there. You also see that he has yellow trunks and yellow shoes. You can take the boy out of the tropics, but you can't take the tropics out of the boy. Born in Guyana, moved to London when he was 15 years old lived on the streets for a while. He was homeless uh, and, and spent his nights in underground stations until eventually his boxing lifted him up and gave him a chance to make some money and subsist. Obviously, this is the biggest opportunity of his life. He collects tropical birds, Jim, and he told us a story about how, as a boy, they would catch birds. They would chew bubble gum then put it in places where they knew the birds were coming to get food, and they would grab the birds and keep them as pets. Maybe he can uh, put some chewed up bubble gum under the shoes of Bernard Hopkins tonight. His only loss was against <laughs> William Joppy in his only fight here in America, Roy. Could he have won that fight if he pushed a little harder? Yeah, a lot of people thought he did win that fight, and had he started early, I'm sure he could have got, gotten rid of William Joppy, but he started a little late, so. You know, Joppy was doing his thing back then, and he didn't come out victorious. So maybe tonight he'll start a little faster and try to get the job done. As Larry said, physically he's a lot like Hopkins. Relatively tall, long arms, relatively thin. And so now Eastman, who had to wait in the dressing room, enters the ring ahead of Hopkins, and let's see how long he has to wait here. He had an interesting comment about Hopkins. He said... He thinks he's invincible, and that's his biggest weakness. Meaning that if he finds himself in a fight, he'll be surprised. And here comes Bernard Hopkins. That number 20 is so much his dominant theme for the fight that for this occasion, he adds an extra X to the word executioner so that it becomes EXX, forming the Roman numeral. Very nicely done. He no longer wears the mask over his head because since the beginning of the Iraq War, actually the, the beginning of the Afghanistan War, Hopkins has said it's no longer appropriate for him to wear the mask over his head. And, and simply through longevity, he really has beaten down all the resistance including here in Los Angeles tonight, fan resistance. Los Angeles was supposed to be a city that could only draw this amount of people for Mexican or Mexican-American fighters. And yet we've got, I don't know, 12, 13,000 people here. Oscar De La Hoya has done a terrific job of hyping the event. And I think a lot of people are genuinely surprised by this crowd. LA is proving to be a boxing town. Every big event at Staples Center, starting with Mosley De La Hoya 1, going through two or three Vitalik Klitschko fights, and including Tarver Johnson, now this, they've all drawn much bigger crowds than were expected. This is a fight town. All right, both fighters are in the ring. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer now for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen from Staples Center, Los Angeles, California, Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions is proud to present the featured bout of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing 
for the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. Brought to you in association with sportsbook.com, sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, Chairman Chris Mears, Vice Chairman John Pryerson, Commissioners in attendance Armando Vergara and Olympic gold medalist Bruce Jenner. The three judges in attendance at ringside scoring this contest on the 10 point system will be Lou Filippo, Ken Morita, and Daniel Vandeville. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Raul Caiz Jr. And now for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. From Staples Center, Los Angeles, California. Let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing yellow, he stands six feet tall and officially weighs 159 and one half pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one. 41 bouts, 40 victories, including 35 knockouts with only one defeat. And tonight, he is ready to shock the world. From Battersea, England, the WBC number one challenger in the world, the Battersea Bomber, Howard Eastman. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black, standing six feet one. His official weight, 159 and one half pounds also. Professional record, 45 victories, including 32 knockouts, with only two defeats, one draw, and one no decision. This contest tonight is a record 20th title defense in the middleweight division, and his future in the Boxing Hall of Fame is assured. Ladies and gentlemen, the fighting pride of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the universally recognized, undisputed, middleweight champion of the world, Bernard, the executioner, Hopkins. Let me get this to one second. Excuse me. Supervisor. All right, everybody out, please. Everybody out, please. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Fighter chief second only, please. Fighter chief second. Fighter chief second. Mouthpiece. Bernard. Let's go, Bernard. Chief second, please. Mouthpiece. All right, gentlemen. Deagle punches are here on up. Take a good look. Here on up. Let's have a good, clean fight. Touch gloves and good luck to both of you. Hopkins says he doesn't want to wake up tomorrow morning with people asking him, what happened? <laughs> We're here to find out what happens. Move that cord back a little, please. Sir, move that cord back a little. Young referee Raul Caiz Jr. Ready, trying to move photographers Ready. back off the apron. Now orders the opening bell. Roy. Bernard Hopkins has a reputation for being tricky, some say dirty. What about a relatively inexperienced referee handling a Hopkins fight? Well, I mean, you know, what people don't realize is they can say what they want to say. This is a fight. So, I mean, the other guy is 34 years old. He's been around the game long enough to know how to have his own little set of tricks. Everybody has their little bag of tricks. You know, we just try not to have to pull them out. Bernard, however, doesn't mind pulling heels out. The referee will be at a disadvantage here because he hasn't worked probably enough for these type fights. But it's to the other guy's ability. I mean, his, it's his own 
business to handle this business. So Eastman has to be his own cop. That's exactly. what you're saying. You got to be your own man. Hopkins generally starts relatively slowly. There he chases Eastman with the jab and hits him with the right hand. Bernard does look rather dry and a little stiff starting out, but he seems stiff sometime when he starts out, so he'll have to warm up. And I think it's not a problem for him unless he gets caught with a shot early, which I don't think will happen. He was so passive in the first four rounds against De La Hoya that Oscar De La Hoya had a lead on the scorecards. One judge still had De La Hoya leading at the moment at which he was knocked out. But Bernard takes his time. He's in no hurry. And he doesn't take stupid chances. That's the biggest thing. He is the number one eliminator of risk among all the fighters I, th I think I've seen. If you measure a fighter by how much punishment he doles out at how much risk, well, you and Bernard are the two guys. Let's go. 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 let Stop! No punching, no punching, no punching. Break, step back to you, no punching. Bernard Here isn't go. exactly a windmill back, himself. Back, no, he's used to these type fights. Yep. Stop, no, 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 stop! Two low blows no from Hopkins <laughs> onto Eastman's <laughs> left hip. Neither was hard thrown, so they probably didn't do a lot of damage, but Eastman took advantage of the chance to point out to referee Raul Kais Jr. that he'd been hit low. I don't think Bernard Hopkins is ever going to be in the Ring Magazine Fight of the Year. All he cares about is winning. That's Stop. all. And that's a smart thing. Step over and go right over the top of it. Not a big shot, just a quick shot, okay? Quick, not big. And if you fight the top, you're right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Not jab, baby. See that jab dropping. Now I see the right, right hand on that shoulder. Just be. You're walking onto a double jab right hand. Come back with the hook when it lands. Yeah. Some grease done, please. Yeah, I've already put some on with it. Okay. 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 see it, please put it. Well, amid the blistering, breathtaking pace of the first round, and <laughs> I'm being facetious here, both fighters are given credit by CompuBox for landing three punches, three apiece. Well, I called the uh, round the draw, so I'm uh, feeling good you about it right now. You and CompuBox are right in line with each other. All right, we heard Gooey Fisher say, Stop. drop break, a step right hand over back, Eastman's please, jab because he's Howard, jabbing back, and then go, dropping go, his go, left. Step back, gentlemen, when I yell, break. You agree, Roy? Yeah, but that's when he was backing up. Now he's looking like he's coming out to be a little bit more aggressive. I think he just took that as a warm-up round, and now he'll stop throwing that jab and throw a more effective jab, I think. We'll see. Eastman pumped in an uppercut and tried the left hook. Hopkins dancing away. Eastman trying to the body with the right hand. Bernard with a little grin on his face as he sizes the Englishman up. Eastman's long arms are creating a little bit of a problem for Bernard. Bernard's counters are a little short because Eastman has such long arms. Eastman stuck a jab in the chest and Bernard was short with the counter punch. A few moments ago, Eastman very casually threw his own right hand to Bernard's left hip. Kind of as if to say, okay, you flick a little light low blow, I'll do it too. And Eastman. now Eastman holds his ground in there and counter punches again. Yeah, and if he was smart, he pushed the issue of whether Bernard's body being that Bernard is the older fighter here. Make him work harder than he wants to work. Letting him fight at this pace, you'll never beat him. Yeah, this is a pace that Hopkins loves. 
You can do this all year long, not night, year. <laughs> I couldn't watch it for a year. <laughs> there are a lot of people here who are having trouble watching it for a night. Both so far. Of, both fighters are a little methodical. Stop, no punch, no punch. Break, step back, that's gentlemen. Here we go. been Hopkins' go, break, trademark in, uh, over the last three or four years. Take his time, figure his opponent out, frustrate his opponent. Now Hopkins steps in, misses with the first left and right, makes a little contact with the second set of punches, steps away with that grin on his face again. He knows that what Eastman wants to do is land a big right hand. Well, he just missed Eastman with a couple of good shots that he know probably may have flowed Eastman if he could have caught him. So, Eastman, I mean. Bernard all but laughing as he steps away from Eastman. Some of the crowd booing because they can see that Bernard is limiting the action, not stepping it up. Whoever beats Bernard Hopkins is going to have to somehow make him seconds, fight. Gentlemen. It's not easy to do. The same discipline that he has, a fighter has to go in with that same mind frame and make sure he's going to keep his game, point, game plan from round one to round three. Right hand shot open, baby. Right hand shot open. Next Saturday night. 140 pounder Miguel Cotto puts his skills to the test against Demarcus Chop Chop Corley. March 10 on HBO Latino. It's Oscar de la Hoya Presente Boceo de Oro featuring some of the best young talents in the sport. March 19, Eric Morales faces off with Manny Pacquiao in a 130 pound battle royal on HBO pay per view. Two offensive fighters who don't take backward steps. And March 26, fan favorite Fernando Vargas makes his long anticipated return to the ring against Raymond Jobao. One, two, hook right and left hook, and then body head, body head. Okay. Two more fans, please. In the second round, by CompuBox count, Hopkins only threw 22 punches, Eastman threw 50. Both guys landed eight. So they landed three punches apiece in the first round. They landed eight punches apiece in the second round. Stop. Oh, the referee okay. caught him then. I'm not gonna tell you guys <laughs> twice. Let's go, box. Hey, Bernard. When I say stop, I mean stop. He knew Bernard was gonna try him to see if he could get away with something. Bernard just short with a right hand that was that was intended to end the fight. I think. Yeah, I think it was too. <laughs> that was a send us home punch, but it didn't make enough contact. Of course, Bernard's never been a one-shot knockout guy, Roy. Nope, an accumulative puncher. I don't like the way he looks here. I've never seen him move quite this much. It's almost like he did against Oscar. He was waiting the guy, let the guy wear himself down a little bit, then he'll take his chances. He's not going to take most of the chances until stop, then. No punch, no punch, left stop. inside by go, Hopkins. Step back. Go. Say, stop, stop. Let's go. Eastman has a chance to win some rounds here if he'll press the action. Just by throwing punches, he could win the rounds. Because Bernard, for the most part, isn't throwing at all. Nope. But of course, if you throw punches, no, no then you run no the punch, risk of no opening punch, yourself up. And that's why Eastman is not throwing punches. Because Bernard is a devastating counterpuncher. Counter -puncher. And waiting on him to make one mistake so he can pop him to some B. Yeah, it, it, it's like that. Good left hook. Jumped in and led with the left hook. It worked so well for Jermaine Taylor earlier. Why not try it? And it's an old Roy Jones play, too. <laughs> the leaping left hook lead. Now Bernard just staying away again. Maybe content to win the round with that one punch. Again, the big right hand just misses Eastman's chin. Now Eastman chases Hopkins to the ropes and lands a right of his own. Punch out, gentlemen. Punch out. Let him go, Howard. Punch out of there. Stop. No punch. No punch. No punch. No punch. No punch. And Hopkins is really punishing Eastman on the inside when the referee thinks that he's just holding. <laughs> he's going to work. What's he doing? 
He hitting him on the cup, he hitting him on the thigh with both hands. Whichever hand is on the opposite side of the referee, he's going to work really hard with that hand. I'm telling you, I think Bernard took one look at the age and experience quotient of the referee and thought to himself, aha. I got him. <laughs> My <laughs> night. I get a note from CompuBox saying that they might begin counting low blows. <laughs> Because he's catching the referee on the opposite side and he's beating the guy on the leg. There you right go, he did it again. That, that was right in the referee's face. Stop in there, okay? Okay, okay. Make sure you move your head, yeah? Over one. Hopkins and Fane come right over the top of the left hand with a straight right lead. Had he extended that punch all the way out, he may have gotten what he wanted out of that punch. Right there, he comes back with a left hook lead, a beautiful left hook lead. Easton Hobbs did counter with the left hook, but it was not nearly as effective as Bernard Hopkins' left hook was. Those highlights are misleading because it looked like action. <laughs> These rounds don't have action. And that's why Larry's so quiet. <laughs> well, a lot of these people step came step to see go, the go, legendary go, go. Bernard Hopkins going for his 20th victory. And uh, stop, so far, punch, they've been punch, disappointed. And I think so have we been. Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> Me and Jim, I got to tell you something. I always talk about four points that you score on. Four criteria. If the punches are equal, the clean punching is 99% of it. You got to look for something else. Stop, no In the first go, round, back, Bernard back, Hopkins was the aggressor. No doubt about it. He wins the first round. But rounds two and three, Howard Eastman just was the aggressor. Round three, Bernard Hopkins had nothing but run away. Two to one, Howard Eastman. I have it one, one, and one. Hard right hand lands for Hopkins. He threw that right cross a few times in the last round. This is the first time he's landed it. This one is a glancing blow with the right hand. And Eastman comes back trying to rake Hopkins with the right of his own. One mistake you see Eastman making is he's not cutting the ring off on Hopkins. He's following Hopkins following around. around yeah. And because it is he eventually runs to something like that hook right there. Good left hook by Bernard Hopkins. One of the better punches in the fight. Eastman seems to want to get back at him with something heavy having taken that punch. It's a natural instinct. Little by little, moment by moment, you can almost feel Bernard drawing in on the target. Lulling Eastman into a position where he can hit him with something hard. Good left hook inside by Hopkins, backs Eastman away. Eastman shrugging his shoulders as if to say, where are you? Yeah, Bernard's confusing him with the feints right about now. Confusing me, too. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> Letting the guy wear himself down, then he'll whoop him. Does Bernard hear the boos, and does he care? He does not care at all. He hears every single one of them. But no blood. Eastman tries a right hand lead. Young referee Raul Kais Jr. getting a lot of work. Hard right hand by Eastman. Another phony war Good round. Left hook. Good left hook by Hopkins. After Run. Eastman fired the long right. And he's following Hopkins still. That's why he got caught with that left hook. This Tuesday, catch Real Sports with Bryant Gumble among the stories. Sprinter Kelly White, who has admitted to using steroids provided by the Bay Area's Balco Lab. Also, April 10, it's Real Sports 10th anniversary special. 
Check out this retrospective of HBO Sports Journalism Show, which has won 13 Emmy Awards. This is your time. Let's go out and take Robert. them on. Doing well. Someone once said there's nothing as real as nothing. <laughs> this is a real fight in that in those terms. Yeah. In round four by CompuBox numbers, Hopkins seven out of 19, Eastman five out of 51. However, Harold Letterman sees fit to give the round to Hopkins, and it's now even on his card. No, no, stop! There you go. Break! There you go. I'll push it back. Let's go. Tall opponents are not as easy to get to as they seem. Stop! His height may be giving a, a Bernard a little bit of a problem here. Earlier, uh, he was short on his counters because of the arm length. He's been able to get to him with the counters, but now Eastman gets to Hopkins with the right hand. Crowd gets excited as Hopkins backs into the ropes. Well, Eastman taking a really good shot is what the crowd is excited about. When you get him caught with good punches, he's taking them and he continues to come out the Benoit. So now Eastman Stop, finally no. is beginning to make it a fight, and Bernard Hopkins complains to the referee that he's being held behind the head. Okay, here we go, box. Good uppercut by Bernard Hopkins. Punch out of there, let's go. Get your hands there, Eastman. Stop! Quick! Wait behind, let's go. Body shots by Eastman. Stop! Hopkins ties him up. You heard the ref say no punches just then, and Bernard landed a beautiful right uppercut. Right after he said no, no punches. And the ref never said a word to him because he didn't see the punch. And because he's Bernard Hopkins. <laughs> Both fighters throwing one punch at a time. Yeah, but Eastman may be wearing down now. Bernard is not going to wear down. Well, Eastman's had a lot of fights. I don't see any sign that he's wearing down. I don't know if he's getting frustrated fighting a, a champion who is uh, moving as much as Hopkins. But when I say wearing down, I mean his punches don't, leave, don't seem to have the same fight on him as they had earlier. Stop, no punches. Here we go. Break, step back, Lee. Let's go. Here we go. Which may be fine. I don't think he had any chance to <laughs> knock Hopkins out anyway. It's the kind of a fight in which he ought to just try to make contact. There's not much scoring going on. Yeah, but he knows making contact means he's going to get tired. Both guys land counter shots. Both guys think they have the other man wobbled. Stop! Break, let's go, here we go. Here we go, let's go. Go on the ropes, go on the ropes. <laughs> Hopkins is fine. As he comes off the ropes, Eastman hits him with another big jab. Actually, I think Eastman got the worst of that jab exchange. As, as, the, as, as Hopkins got him with the left hand at the same time. Took by Hopkins. And a big left hook. Eastman retaliates, but Hopkins' second left hook was one of the better punches stop, of the fight. Here goes Crowd's very anxious to cheer, so they do so. Bring it down. Bring it down, baby. Bring it down. You're in charge of this. Bad motherfucker. Red Rock, baby. Put a little pop on my jab, man. Put a little pop on my jab and go right off the jab. Nothing big. Just quick. All right, son? Yeah, when you're up close. Oh, deep breathe, Alan. Come on, deep breathe. Is it you with his best shot? Yeah. Is it you with his best shot now? That's Listen. all he's got. Stop. Watch your hand yeah. Don't let him hit you with that city left hook. You block them all day long in the gym and return Where your hook and then go with the right hand, okay? Where? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Rambo, it's wet. Cheers. Yeah. He see Bernard fainting with the left hand down, and boom, he landed a big left hook. He got caught back with one in, but he came right back behind it, and this time he landed the left hook, and he didn't get caught back. Yeah. That was the hot punch. I was beginning to wonder if we were ever going to see a guy land in double figures by CompuBox count, and in that round, they each landed 11 punches. Hopkins 11 out of 23, Eastman 11 out of 44. Bernard just isn't throwing very many punches. No, tonight. he's one of the most economical fighters you'll ever see. He's not going to waste a lot of punches. He's not going to tie himself out. He's going to 
be economical with his shots so that at the end of the fight, he'll be the stronger fighter. When he watches a fighter like Juan Diaz or someone else who throws 100 punches around, he must think those guys are crazy. Just different, I guess. Just different. That's what makes Juan Diaz. <laughs> That's right. This is what has made Benoit Hopkins. Yep. Styles make fights. Styles make fighters, too. And had he not fought this way in the, in the, in the, pre, in the past, he wouldn't be making his 20th defense now. Well, certainly, he's never been in a war. Uh, I mean, outside of the contact he took from you 12 years ago, he's scarcely been hit. Smartly not been hit. <laughs> Good left hook by Hopkins and a right hand behind him. Carefully chosen, well thrown. Now he's starting to warm up. Hopkins beginning to step up inside and get at Eastman. As Roy pointed out, Eastman's punches have lost some snap. Hopkins can take a couple more chances. And Hopkins is starting to warm up a little bit now. Good feint. Good uppercut by Hopkins. Eastman trying to do some work with the left hand inside. Hopkins holding his right hand. Stop, no punching, no punching. Great step back. Let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hopkins is patiently waiting for Eastman to come to him. There's so a welt outside Eastman's him. right eye. That should be from the left hook. He's eight. He's, he's, he, right. he just ate two beautiful ones at the end of the last round. There's the feint that's giving open for the left hook right there. As the rounds go on, Hopkins' opponents begin to feel the fight getting shorter. Generally, they begin to try to take some risks to get at him. And that's when Bernard is able to step up his game, particularly with that withering right-hand counter punch. But tonight, it's been the left hook that's doing the damage. And partly because of where Eastman is holding his hand. See where he has his right hand in front of his chin? Yep. There's no way he's going to block the left hook when he doesn't see it because his right hand is in front of his face. And Bernard pops him once again with a perfect left hook, executing the principle. He blocked, he blocked that one. Ten seconds, stop at the bell, gentlemen. I don't think so. You think it was blocked? He blocked that one. Take your word for it. Hopkins beginning to impose himself. That was the first round in which you really began to see the skill of a superstar champion. Don't fall in the man, okay? Don't fall in the man, all right? Sit back, 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 he see how with the one, two, all night long, the jab and the right hand been coming right behind the jab and it's been working for him. Beautiful one, two combination, right on the chin. And I think that shot buckled Eastman just a little bit. Here they traded jabs. Bernard hit him with a beautiful left jab when he came in. First, Bernard took a light jab and he landed a short, strong jab. Hopkins landing 12 out of 24 punches in the sixth round. Nine of them power shots. Eastman six out of 57 throughout the fight. Eastman is landing about 12% of his punches, that has to be frustrating. Yeah, and he's in that deep water now where his punches have gotten a little Stop, no shorter. Punch, no punch. They're that not that as hard that. as they were. He, he don't have enough to really keep Hopkins off of him right now. Harold, how do you have it through six? <laughs> Stop, okay, Jim. You, you know, break for five rounds, I tell you, I wasn't watching a hell of a lot. Uh, Bert, how would he spend one rounds two and three when Bernard didn't do a darn thing? Stop, and no, then no, the fifth no, round, no, Bernard no, ran no, away. No, but no, in no, his no, sixth no, round, no, Bernard no, Hopkins no, took no, over no, this fight. It was like watching a different fight. Big sixth round for Hopkins. I got a three to three, 57 to 57. Break but momentum back, is with Bernard Hopkins right now. Although Eastman just landed a right hand. Now Hopkins pops Stop, Eastman no punch, no punch, with a left hook. Eastman is going to have to take some chances to make something happen. Punch out of the ball. Let's go. Punch out of the Let's try it out. Let's go. There you go. And usually, that's the trouble. 
Stop. No punches, no punches. a couple good punches then, but he's so close that Bernard is smothering his arm, so the punches are not having no effect on Bernard. No, no punching, no punching. Stop. Great. Stop. There's been no mention of low blows, no warning. Nothing from the referee. Good right hand shot by Hopkins. And he comes back with a combination as Eastman hung there for a moment as a target. Straight right hand for Hopkins. <laughs> He's finally measured him with that right hand that his corner has been telling him to look for all fight long. Do what you call taking him to school right now. He's got him figured out. He's figured out the range. He's warmed up. Now everything is working for him. Punch out of there, get your arms out of there, let's go, punch out of there. Stop! No punching, no punching. Break, step back, here we go. Hit the body, hit the body, Ed. Hit the body, Ed. In case you've just joined us, you're watching Bernard Hopkins finishing up the seventh round of what has been a relatively dull title defense against Howard Eastman so far earlier this evening. Jermaine Taylor on the undercard scored a spectacular third round technical knockout of his opponent, Daniel Edouard. Water for the head. Water for the head. Listen. Wait, 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 we used to excellence, baby. So you know how they want you to finish. Pick it up with your jab, son. Uh, yeah. All right? Oh. Let him run into the jab, dig that body, X Factor. Walk him back. Okay? Watch his combination, son. Okay? Dig that body, X Get him out of there. Come on, get him out of there. Let's go, second up. Eastman's trainer is a Robert McCracken, a fighter he once beat. And I think he heard, Stop, you heard him say exactly you. what. No, 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 back up. Hopkins generally does. He fights about a minute of the round, and the rest of the time he holds, he Stop. moves. No punch, no punch, he you doesn't go. let Step you back. fight when you want to fight. It's up to the opponent to make Hopkins fight more than he wants to. It's that ring generalship that Harold will be talking about. Presumably, that's something that Taylor can do. Make him fight more than he no, wants no to, punch. Roy. No, 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 no. Here we go. hope go. so. Straight left hand into the face of Eastman. Boy, Bernard's timing is perfect when he's picking his shots. The jab is, was working perfect for him. Anytime he's working off the jab, now he's looking terrific. Just like he did right then. Takes a soft right hand, returns a hard right hand, hits Eastman with his best right cross, drives him into the ropes. Eastman working to the body. Hopkins coming right back to the body. Here you go. Anytime Bernard works off of that jab, there's nothing Eastman can do with him. Shot and Bernard's not letting him sit still enough to plant that one shot. That's why he's having a problem. Two little left hooks inside for Eastman, and a third left hook lands for Eastman. Hopkins smiles and shakes his head as if to say he didn't hurt me, and Eastman hits him with the best right hand he's landed all night. That was a good right hand. Very good flurry by Eastman, his best of the fight. Absolutely. That right hand may have damaged Bernard. 
And he walks right back into a jail. Don't punch him, don't punch him, break. Here we go. Eastman used his jab more, it'd be much more effective for him. Stop, no punching, no punching. Just Break short with go. another attempt at big right hand. Hopkins got in a right to the body. Now Hopkins' his right cross lands on Eastman's chin and he fires in a little left as well. Stop, no punching, no punching. Break. There we go, there we go. 10 seconds, stop at the bell, gentlemen. Left hook lead for Hopkins. Drives Eastman back into the ropes. Lands the left hook again, does Bernard. And to the body. And flurries after the bell, forcing the young referee into action. Hopkins felt he had the advantage and he was just going to keep going as long as he wanted to do it until the referee stopped. Yeah, and the referee's hollering at the other guy. <laughs> Hey, rep, keep staying on the back of the hand. Come on, son. Deep breath, baby. Deep breath. Nice and professional. You're a fucking dog, baby. You want the boss. Come on, Alan. Four more rounds, Alan. Throw them shots and aim that hook at the chest, and you won't go wide, all right? Mm -hmm. Keep your head moving and back him up behind the chest. Here's what you can tell Bernard feels like he has these men. Right there, you heard the bell ring, but he don't want to stop because he's on top and he feels like he's taking the control now, so he's showing Eastman, hey, I'll stop when I get ready. That's right. Just like he started when he got ready. <laughs> hey, come here, wipe this And face, if you ask Bernard face. later, wipe did you take face. advantage of a younger, less experienced wipe referee and say, who, me? <laughs> Why would I do something like that? Bernard Hopkins calls himself the executioner, but... Uh, he usually favors a slow death for his Stop, no opponents. Break, step back here. Here you go. Not the guillotine, not the axe. Just delayed reaction, lethal injection, huh? Yeah. It's clinical, usually. Stop, no punching. Break, step back here. Here we go. The bad thing for Eastman is that being that you're the longer arm guy, you must use your jab. He stopped using his jab. And that's kind of what took him out of the fight because Bernard started using his jab instead, like that. Stop punching, stop! Break, step back, here you go. No Sometimes it appears Eastman is a long-armed guy who prefers fighting inside. That's what it appears It's not easy to do. No, it's not. Especially against the Bernard Hopkins. Big left hook for Hopkins after Eastman chased Hopkins trying to follow up on a right hand. Huge left hook for Hopkins there. Eastman takes it very well. Looks for a chance to land another right. Stop, no punch, no He's smothering his own punches. He's getting entirely too close trying to follow Bernard Hopkins, and he constantly is running into a big left hook. Against William Joppy in the latter part of the fight, Eastman landed a lot of uppercuts. I guess you can't land an uppercut on Hopkins. He's too smart. Well, he's getting caught with a hook too much. The left hook is making him keep that uppercut at home. Gotcha. I would like to see him stand and deliver, not just move and jump in with one punch. He can't have it, though, because Bernard won't let him sit still and plant that one punch. So he's never sure when, that, when Bernard's going to beat up for that one. Like that. Right hand lead by Hopkins. Stop, no now Eastman no gets a chance to crack him with the right hand in close. But as Roy Jones points out, short range, arm not fully extended, not maximum power. Nope. Hopkins sticks a little left hand and then moves. Because of the movement, Eastman is used off balance when he's punching now. Hard right hand by Hopkins. Stuns Eastman stop, stop. and the crowd. That was a great shot. Ten seconds. Stop at the bell, gentlemen. Ten seconds. Call Eastman following him again. Stop at the bell. Misses with the right, but Hopkins gets in a little left hook. The last successful punch of the round.
March 19, HBO pay-per-view brings you an all-action 130-pound matchup beating Eric Morales against big punching Manny Pacquiao. March 19, HBO pay-per-view. All right, make sure you jab your way in. Throw the right hand on the hook, and then go again with the right hand on the hook. Nobody has a stick like that. Give me some more jab, some more jab. Don't worry about big. And it's your free punch. Got Tom? Any two or three pumps, we'll do it, baby. Off All right. that stick, X. If they trying to counter it, your faint is too good. This guy. He see Eastman following Hopkins around with the jab to the bottom, and Hopkins let him get right too close, and came right over the top of that jab with a straight right lead. A bad swap for Eastman. In round nine, by CompuBox count, Hopkins 17 out of 33. He's probably landed more than half his punches in the fight. Eastman, 7 out of 50 for only 14%. Harold, how do you have it? Nine. Hopkinson, in round 6, 7, 8, and 9. Bernard Hopkins really got into a rhythm. You know, he lets Howard Eastman move in behind that light jab, and then he just nails him with a solid right hand. No question, Bernard Hopkins did more damage in round 6, 7, 8, and 9. So, 6 rounds to 3, 87, 84, Bernard Hopkins. I have it 5 rounds to 2 and 2 even for Hopkins. Oh, oh, my goodness. What a left hook. He's so quick on the release. And Eastman continues to wear that right hand right down in front of his chin, where it's doing him no good, and that's why he's getting caught the left hook. Hopkins again lands the right and the left. Eastman looks at him as if to say, you're a mystery to me, dude. <laughs> He's a clock with no hands. Ageless. And the thudding right hand by Hopkins. Stop! No punching, no punching, no punching. Boy, there's a lot of excitement about Morales and Pacquiao on March 19. Do you favor the bigger Morales or the faster Pacquiao? Well, it all depends because uh, Morales, I think, can box him and, and do damage, but if he fights the same fight he fought Barrera last time, he may have a problem on his hand. Because if you slug with Manny Pacquiao... You give him a chance, and that's what he loves to do. He doesn't know reverse, he only knows fast forward. Jab, jab, left cross. Jab, jab, left cross. And 2,000 more behind Misses with the fast left hook and then just sticks him out and says, Well, I can hit you. Anytime he gets ready. Jabs, misses short with the right hand, takes an uppercut. Stop, stop. Eastman finally gets in the uppercut as, as Hopkins was rambunctiously coming forward. Back him up, back him up. That's the jab, it's not. Double jab is not that count. Hopkins hasn't been knocked down in more than a decade, and he has never suffered a cut. I raise that now because obviously something dramatic is going to ha have to happen and the likelihood of it seems small for Eastman to pull something off. No, I don't think he's going to be able to pull nothing off here. right hand to punctuate another round in which Bernard Hopkins <laughs> more or less dominated Howard Eastman. These guys hanging around a little too soft, a little too long, son. Hanging around a little too long. <laughs> like trying to put something together. Red rock, baby, that jab is controlled. Trying to try to put something together, son. Any twos or threes, okay, baby? Not to be big, he's there for you. Nobody does this like you. Oh, look, man. Uh, okay? Yeah. Couple of rounds, let's work your socks off. We'll get this guy out of there. We'll get this guy out of there, okay? Two rounds, we'll get this guy out of there, okay? Okay. Here you see Bernard letting Eastman follow him around, and bam, there goes the left hook you've been hitting him with all night long. Maybe tomorrow somebody will tell him that you got caught with that same left hook over and over and over again. That's why you're not champion today. And when he does get ready for the left hook, Bernard bounces, faints a little like that, and sneaks the left hand, the right hand over the top. Round 11 stop, begins. Stop, no punching, no punching, gentlemen. Let's go. No, no, don't do that. Let's go. Keep it clean. 
Keep it clean, gentlemen. Let's go. Jabs through the 10th round. Eastman has thrown 225 of them to only 83 for Hopkins, but Hopkins has landed more. That's how ineffective Eastman has been with his jab all night long. That's why he only occasionally lands a power punch. Yeah, but he's always open to the left hook because of where he keeps his right hand at. And every time he comes in, Bernard just bad back and hook him just like Perfect that. left hook right on the jaw. Just like that all night long. Now, Jermaine I... Taylor does set up power shots with his jab. <laughs> Do you see anything? And this is this comes from a viewer, Roy, directly off the web from a viewer. Do you see anything in Hopkins here that Jermaine might be able to take advantage of? No, nothing at all. <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> Probably not the one our viewer was looking for. Crowd oohs and dahs as Hopkins lands these carefully selected left hooks and right crosses. Yeah, you know, what, what he's so good at is identifying exactly where the opponent will show a weakness and then Stop. continually no punch, no punch, no punch. exploiting it. He takes his time, waits for his opponent to wear himself down a little bit to get out of that danger zone. Then he goes to work on the weakness. Right now, he knows he's got open for a left hook all night, so he just con continues to throw the left hook when this guy comes at him. The only good thing about um, Jermaine Taylor is that Jermaine Taylor is much more balanced than Eastman. Therefore, he will be able to land more punches than what Eastman is landing on Hopkins. Stronger, too. Yeah, he is stronger, but strong doesn't mean nothing if you can't put it on the target. in a southpaw stance now. Crowd booing as Hopkins edges away from Eastman. Surely, those who have sat through the whole fight in the crowd now understand that they're probably looking at a 12-round Bernard Hopkins decision, which is the norm. I wouldn't count out the fact of maybe him stopping Eastman now. Because he's landing Stop, some no pretty no clean punches. Punch. Right, I wouldn't count it out. It's possible. The point is that Bernard won't take even the slightest risk to accomplish it. Oh, yeah, he would. At this point, he would. He's already... He because has, he can get away with anything. He's got the rhythm down pat now. He knows what Eastman's punches feel like. He knows when to take that gamble now and when not to. Hopkins Stop, mildly no, insulted, no, steps no, back no, trying no, to no, land no, something no, of his own. And sticks a left in Eastman's face. As round 11 comes to a close, we got three minutes left in the fight. And after those three minutes, in all likelihood, Bernard Hopkins will have his 20th successful title defense. XX for the execution. XX and on to the next. Good job, so far. this Pull it for me, baby. Deep breath, deep breath, deep breath. Deep breath, slow, come on, baby. Slow. That's how you aim. Let the man fight, come on. Jab, all right? Don't yeah, wait for him. him. One sec, let me read him. Don't wait for him. Come on, come on, son, come on, come on. One this is round. what you're here for, this title. Let's go out and take it, come on. Let's take this guy out in this round. Double jump. All right. All you want to do is run for it. Put a good stick in that chest, man. People who uh, haven't seen Hopkins before you may be wondering, well, why is he so great? He doesn't have the kind of sensational style you sometimes equate with greatness. But just think of him more like a Don Sutton who won about 15 or 16 games a year for over 20 years and got into the Hall of Fame rather than uh, a Bob Gibson or a Sandy Koufax who, who had great, great uh, years. And I'll tell you, just call him a pure professional. Get up this head, let's go. And it's a One skill time, to go, fighting. There's a professionalism and to there's, fighting. And there's a lot to be said for longevity when it's conducted on this high level. Yep. Well, and frankly, if you eliminate the crowd-pleasing element, it becomes easier to win all your fights, <laughs> if you're that good. And he's eliminated the crowd-pleasing element. Well, you know, but you're a champion. Every fighter that comes to fight you presumably is going to be 105 or 110 percent. You've got to be ready every single time. And he is. Oh, what a great left hook. 
Bernard Hopkins in the last four or five rounds has thrown some of the best no left no hooks no and no right crosses no we've no seen no in the last no few no years, no and that's the no professionalism no that Roy no Jones no is talking no about. Yep. The knockout of Delahoya came against a smaller man fighting out of his weight class at 160. Eastman's a legitimate middleweight. Hopkins has taken his time in the fight, waiting for Eastman to string himself out just a little bit. Began to hammer him with power shots, particularly as counter punches in the middle rounds, and then in the late rounds has done just about whatever he wanted to do. Watch your hands, let's go. Watch your hands, both of you. Stop, no punching, no punching. Great step back, here we go. One minute to go. Eastman has made an effort. Uh, he, he's given his best. Just Stop, doesn't no appear to no be punching. good enough against the great let's go, let's go. old club. But he did try hard. He gave it an honest effort. He wasn't afraid. He came in and gave the fans what they paid to see tonight. And you gotta take your head off to him for that. Just outclassed. As have been so many other opponents over the years. Hopkins seemingly on the way to his 46th victory in 49 fights. He lost his first fight. Roy pointed out to me that it was in the cruiserweight division. When as a totally inexperienced, fledgling professional fighter, he was matched against a guy he couldn't handle. Fighter's name was Clinton Mitchell. Then in 1993, he lost a showdown with Roy Jones in Washington, D.C. And that is the last time Bernard Hopkins lost a fight. And I don't think it happened tonight either. Harold, what's your opinion? Final okay. scorecard. Jim, 117-111, Bernard Hopkins. Jim, he won everything from the sixth round on. I mean, he won six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, and twelve by letting Howard Eastman come to him and just whack him with either a solid right hand or a great left hook, just as Roy Jones Jr. has been telling us all night. Bernard Hopkins fought a beautiful fight. The one thing I got to say about Howard Eastman is he's got a great jaw, but that doesn't win fights. He's 40 years old and continues to be a marvel. No signs of deterioration, at least not tonight. So, Roy, you fought him once. The two of you dickered over and over to try to put together a second fight and never could make a deal that both of you liked. Right. But you're friends with Bernard Hopkins, oh, aren't yeah. you? Most definitely. Have the utmost respect, taught him a lot about the game. He learned a lot from me, even though I was the younger of the two. He still learned a lot about the way I did business, which is why he was able to maintain, hold on for so long, and finally get his just due. And believe it or not, back when I fought Richard Hall, I told him the way for him to go was to go to the Oscar De La Hoyas and the Philly Trinidad's because they could not beat him. He took my word, and look where he is today. Tremendous. Bernard Hopkins. Let's go to Michael Buffer to see if Hopkins has won for the 46th time. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Staples Center, Los Angeles, we go to the scorecards. Lou Filippo scores the contest, 119-110. Daniel Vandeville, 117-111. Ken Morita, 116-112. All to the winner by unanimous decision. And still undisputed middleweight champion of the world, Bernard. The Executioner Hopkins! Only the second loss of Howard Eastman's career. He's fought twice in the United States. He's lost twice. He'll go back to England and win a few more fights there, probably. And uh, Hopkins, who holds all the belts in the middleweight division, can put any belt he wants around his neck or his waist. Here are the Final copy box numbers, Hopkins landing 148, 66 more punches than Eastman landed, even though he threw 253 fewer punches 
Thus, the dramatic difference in connect percentage. Hopkins landing 43% of his punches, and Eastman only 13%. In the jab category, it was even more one-sided, as Hopkins landed more than twice as many jabs while throwing about a third as many. If you look at those numbers, the word which comes to mind is the one that Roy Jones used all evening, economical or efficient. That's what Hopkins is. That's exactly what he is. He's efficient, he's consistent, he's the best you are ever going to see at those two things. And let's go to Larry Merchant, who stands by with his buddy Bernard. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, Bernard. A uh, tougher Englishman than you expected? Let Oscar get up front. Can we get up front? Get up front, Oscar. Yes. I'm an mean, Englishman. I, you know, I knew he was tough, Larry. I mean, I watched the tapes of him. He's come over from England. He's tough. He take a hell of a shot. And, um, you know, he gives good shots, too. He's a pretty decent puncher. So, yeah, he did. I give, I give him a B-. minus. What do you think about the crowd? What, uh, what, a uh, little bit of uh, It was hot cold. Huh? No, but, but you heard some cheers, though. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we heard more cheers than boos. So, um, I, think they was, I think they wanted to see... Um, you know, a Gaddy, a Gaddy War type thing. And you know what? I gave it to him in Sparks, but I don't fight like that way. You know what I mean? I got my style, and uh, I can turn it up when I have to. But um, I'm pretty sure nobody's going to ask me for their money back when they leave out of here, I don't think. They couldn't get it back anyway, yeah. <laughs> Bernard. Uh, what does 20 mean to you? Why is it so much bigger than 19? One is because no other middleweight have, achieved, have accomplished that. And uh, I feel at the age of 40, um, a month into 40, and uh, his accomplishment that I, I wanted since I um, got to 11 or 12 defenses. And, and it's an honor to make history and uh, be part of Golden Boy promotion with Oscar to, uh, to share that, that joy and Bowie Fisher and my team um, of making this achievement with 20 defenses. It's, it's unique, and um, um, you got your tux on today, and uh, I think uh, you came out for a cocktail. <laughs> um, let's talk about Jermaine Taylor. You've talked about wanting to fight the winner of Trinidad and Wright the winner of Johnson and Tarver, but they're not gonna, those fights aren't gonna happen until May, June, which means that you couldn't fight either one of those guys probably till way later in the year. Well, Jermaine Teller's available. Okay, so Jermaine Teller's available. So do you have your sights on him? Well, um, I have my sights on a few people, and um, one of them is Jermaine Teller. He's on uh, the execution of death row list waiting to, uh, to, to, to meet his fate. But um, yeah, Jermaine Teller, I respect the young lion coming up as, as he is, and he looked tremendous tonight. So you, do you think that the fact that he had a sensational uh, victory in the uh, earlier fight, do you think that that will build up an anticipation of a fight with you, set it up, and, and the media and the fans uh, demand to see that fight? If the media and the fans and HBO and pay-per-view and uh, Mark Tatheter and everybody uh, uh, at the network and the fans uh, want it, um, you know, they, they would scream for it. But uh, if you're asking me, uh, which I believe you are, Am I ready and willing and able to uh, take the task of a young lion? Yes, I am, Larry. Thank you. You're a remarkable I'm a miss you, old man. lion. I'm miss you after, <laughs> after the year's over, man. Thank you. You know what I mean? I'm going to miss you. Jim? Believe it or not, I'm going to miss you. They're getting closer all the time, aren't they? Well, uh, Roy, it was a, uh, a typical signature Bernard Hopkins performance, and that's what he'll try to do against Taylor, too, right? Yeah, I mean, why change? If that's what's been winning for you, that's what has you making history with these Immaculate defenses, why change that? Don't let people change you and make you be something that you don't want to be. The one thing uh, I, I think to which you can best speak is one of his ambitions is to go up to light heavyweight and fight the winner of Antonio Tarver versus Glenn Johnson. Now, you you went up to 175, you were fine. You've got a sturdier body than Bernard. Can he fight light heavyweights? Yeah, he can fight light heavyweight. Plus, he already beat um, Glenn Johnson before, yeah. so he's not worried about that. And Tarver is a good fighter, good puncher, but Bernard feels like he's been in the game long enough to be able to survive or whatever. So I don't think he'll have a problem handling that division, although those guys are a little stronger and will be a little bit bigger than he is. All right, and uh, what a night it's turned out to be here at HBO's World Championship Boxing. We didn't necessarily plan it this way, but on this telecast, you've heard from Roy Jones, Mike Tyson, Oscar De La Hoya, Jermaine Taylor, Bernard Hopkins. Is there anybody significant from the past 15, 20 years we didn't hear from? And now, Larry Merchant's closing comment. You get everything here. Larry, what'd you think? Uh, here in downtown Los Angeles, there's a monument called the Watchtower, in which some guy built for decades out of pieces of glass, flotsam and jetsam, something that turned out to be art. And there are occasionally that comes along these loners uh, who do something that 
adds up in the long, long term to a remarkable thing. There's an artist out in the Nevada desert who's building a sculpture a mile long. There's a guy out in the, the Dakotas building uh, a 500-foot statue of, of uh, Chief Crazy Horse. That's what Bernard Hopkins has done, bit by bit, chiseled away, and he has built a monument to himself by winning 20 successive middleweight championship fights. The Watchtower. Bernard Hopkins. Well, you tuned in to see if the world's best fighter could do it again, and he did. Now let's look ahead to some upcoming programs. They're going to be airing here on HBO.